when using the Fibonacci wedge to find potentially stronger resistance, we follow the same method we used for support, except we place the first trend line from the high to the low of a bearish movement. This will then determine the length of the second trend line, which runs from the first to third point. We then position this horizontally to give us the approximate time range of when resistance could be stronger. In this case, since it's an established downtrend, our potentially stronger resistance area isn't even directly contacted. Now we'll apply the method in a situation where price begins to reverse back up, as a downward retracement within an established uptrend has potentially halted. Place the first point at the high of that sharp peak, then take the second point down to the most recent upswing, and then rotate the third point back up so it's horizontally in line with the first point. And there is indeed stronger resistance during this time range. Extending down to the more recent lower upswing point produces similar results and of course will be slightly longer. Now with the return back to a clear downtrend, we can repeat the same process at these new highs and new upswings. And it won't be uncommon to have results like this where this horizontal portion of the wedge does not get put into use, since price doesn't return back anywhere near it and instead keeps dropping to progress the downtrend. With such developments, we can then again adjust by extending down to the more recent upswing point. But this isn't very useful since price isn't even anywhere near our resistance range of interest, and more importantly that time range has already been passed. And it's a similar outcome when we reference a more recent downswing point to place the first point of the Fibonacci wedge, because naturally everything becomes proportionally shorter. But with this recent gap down and rebound, we end up with a wedge that gets good coverage in terms of price and time. Realistically, several wedges could be applied before one is even put to use with price nearing its horizontal resistance range. This resistance range is indeed potentially stronger during the specified time range, but there's a sufficient increase of buyers entering the market to drive over this barrier. During the run-up to this breakout, price closely approximates the curvature of some of these levels. This kind of movement could also better be observed with Fibonacci arcs and circles. It's not our main focus with the wedge, and such movement doesn't guarantee a successful breakout. To assess that, we simply focus on how price and volume develop upon contacting the horizontal portion of the Fibonacci wedge. 